First, we're going to look at uh, some aspects of uh, nuclear physics. Why is nuclear and quantum physics thought of as being a very difficult thing to understand? And we're going to look at one aspect of that now. And uh, the first thing is that in the microscopic world, in other words, the nuclear world, energy is discrete. And we'll look at what that means. Now, this is a photo taken in 1927. These are some of the biggest brains in uh, physics of the time. There might be some that you can uh, recognize. Um, see if there are any that um, you think are there. To name a few, Schrodinger, very famous. Pauli, Heisenberg, famous for his uncertainty principle. Bragg, to do with X-ray diffraction. Dirac, Compton discovered the neutron. De Broglie, he looked at the how electrons behave like waves. Bohr, he came up with a new model of the atom. Planck did research into the energy of radiation. Curie needs no introduction. Lorentz, and uh, this gentleman needs no introduction either. So why does nuclear physics have the reputation of being so difficult? Well, basically, after 2,000 years of classical physics, for example, Aristotle, Galileo, Newton, um, all the physics was basically believed to be understood right until the end of the 18th century. But then people started looking into the atom and what was going on there. And basically, it didn't work in the same way. In fact, all the things that were intuitive until that point just didn't work. So nothing kind of worked in the same way. So basically all the laws of physics, which had been well understood at that point, started going a bit weird. They didn't work anymore. So all that physics that had been understood at that point, when it came to nuclear objects, very small objects, it had to be basically rewritten. Now in our world, energy is continuous and we'll give a demonstration of that. Let's say we have a ball rolling down a hill. It's at this level, and it could roll down to this point here. It could be anywhere on this hill, but we've chosen that it goes down to here. And now it's at this level. It basically loses a certain amount of energy, and that energy turns into kinetic energy, as you know. It depends on the height difference. You know, that change of height is basically going to be the loss of potential energy, mgh. And that will be turned into kinetic energy. So this distance here, which could be any distance, is basically turned into kinetic energy, which could be any energy, depends on the different distance, and if we could get any velocity from this. So H can have any value, and so therefore the E can be any value. In other words, we say the range is continuous. And because the energy can have any value, the velocity can have any value. Now, in the quantum world, in the nuclear world, energy is discrete. It doesn't work like this. What we find, energy is like only rungs on a ladder. So this ball can fall down to this rung or that rung, but nowhere in between. So this is what we say, what we, what we mean by discrete. It can be this energy drop or that energy drop. Let's look at one. There are only three rungs on this ladder. So we start at this energy level, call it energy one, and it goes down to that energy level. It can go this one, it can go to this one instead, but it can't go to anything else in between. This is a new energy level, energy two. What is the change of energy there? Well, the change of energy is uh, E1 minus E2. But this change in energy can only be one of three discrete values. In other words, it's not continuous, it's discrete, or we say quantized. So when this energy gets released in some form, it can only have certain values, which correspond to the energy changes inside this ladder. So to summarize, in the microscopic world, energy is discrete. In our world, any energy level can exist. Energy changes can have any value, which means energies are continuous and output energies are continuous. 
In the quantum world, however, only certain levels exist. Energy changes can have only certain permitted values depending on the positioning of the rungs in the ladder, so to speak. In other words, the energy output are discrete or quantized. You can only get certain values and there's certain other values that you can't have because they don't correspond to energy jumps on the ladder. To show you how weird this is going to get in quantum physics, which is a high level topic, first of all, we find out that light waves, which were waves, start behaving like particles. We also find out that particles, like electrons, start behaving like waves, which means that electrons, for example, can start to diffract and start to interfere with each other, forming interference patterns. Also, matter, which we consider to be um, finite and well defined, starts to get a bit blurry. There's a bit of uncertainty as to where it starts or where it ends. Also, particles can be in two places at the same time. Also, cats were put in hypothetical boxes and, and maybe killed. Another thing, when you add masses together on a quantum level, they don't add up to the way you expect. In other words, 2 plus 2 does not equal 4. Energy, which used to take on any value in classical physics, was only allowed to have certain values. In other words, it's quantized. So this is uh, an example of some of the weirdness that is to follow. There are two quotes in physics that are very famous. One is by Bohr, who said, Anyone who is not shocked by quantum theory has simply not understood it. And this is kind of paraphrased by Richard Feynman, who says, If you think you understand quantum mechanics, then you don't understand quantum mechanics. So basically, don't be surprised if it doesn't make sense.